Stark Sam! We're presently um, on the stairway that leads to the men's ensemble dressing room at the stage right at the Schubert Theater. There's a back door to that dressing room that leads to a section of catwalks and fire escapes that connect four different Broadway theaters. And supposedly, there's a way you can get from one to the other through this private network of catwalks. Let's go check it out. Alrighty. Just some cool guys opening a door. Hey Terry, uh, we're in the men's ensemble dressing room. We're just gonna pop the door open. Just wanted to let you know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Here we go. Wow. Beautiful sunny day. Make sure, don't get locked out. Very important, put the door stopper in place. So, I have to uh, give credit where credit's due. I learned about this from an amazing book called The Untold Stories of Broadway, written by our friend Jennifer Tepper. It's incredible, it's interviews with people from, from decades of working in the business about every single theater on Broadway. And that's how I found out, so thank you, Jen. Here we are, in between our theater, the Schubert, and next door to us, which is the Broadhurst. Anastasia. Anastasia is here. Now, this is the door to our mezzanine level. Uh, the stairs gets you to the uh, balcony level. So in an emergency, these doors would open and people would be able to get out and, and Is that what the purpose the of this is? This yes. is an emergency exit. I think that's how it started. But I think there are doors, like the door to our dressing room, that lead to the dressing rooms of these other theaters. These are just two of them. So come down the stairs. There's also a great story when I asked our crew guys about this before I explored it. And they said that their dads, and their dad's dads, because it's a very generational thing, the crew, the, it's, it's like a hand-me-down career. Um, they we, said, have like, we have like fathers and sons on our crew, yeah, for instance. Quite literally. They said that in the old days, before security systems and security cams and, and, and trip, alarm trip sensors, um, they, their dads would take jobs at multiple theaters that had joined like this because everything was written on paper and it wasn't in computers, so they could take a job for a show at the Schubert and also get hired for a job next door at the Broadhurst or at the Booth or at the Schoenfeld, and they could literally like be pushing something on stage on one show and then on a five minute break run over here and do something else in this show and, and they would get, get paid, paid for dollars. Very Cynthia Nixon. Yes. I'm sorry. So here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh my Duran God, Duran's coming through. Did you guys ask? How did you make it here? How do we make it here? How we called the number. Where are you coming from? I'm coming from the bungalow upstairs, the men's dressing That's room. how we got here. Oh. And we put a stopper That's on great. the door. There's more stairs? You want to come with us on this of journey? Course. Come on, it's come on. Duran. Duran is in our show. Is Duran is They've already the met Duran, okay. star. Sorry, guys. So now we've gone north. And now the theaters we're next to are the Booth Theater Booth and the theater. Schoenfeld. Schoenfeld is where we have Come, come from, from Away. The Booth is where we have Gary, our new neighbors. And just like I said, see, those are the doors that lead to their mezzanine level, which I think is the only thing they have, right? They so we could go in and we could see Nathan Lane yeah. on stage right yeah. Not right now, but, but, but soon. If I, if I had a friend in this theater, like an usher or something, during the show, because I have a huge break in the show, in our show. I could come up here, I could do a special knock like this. It's not really gonna happen, I'm just acting it out. Because he they, doesn't they could, have a friend in there. <laughs> they could pop the door and I could sneak back and I could watch like 15 minutes of Gary for free. You're saying you can watch shows for free if you have friends in a show? <laughs> uh, it's, it's, a, it's quite a concept, right? All right, let's keep going. Like, I wonder where that door goes. That looks like that's a dressing room. That's into our theater, right? That's this theater, that's the booth. Oh, that's the booth. Yes. This is now, that's the audience. This is stage right of the booth. And I bet you anything that is leading to a dressing room. We gotta find out who it is. Julie White? Could it be Julie White? It could be Kristen Nielsen. Kristen Nielsen. Oh my god, you guys. It could be Nathan Lane! <laughs> it might be Nathan Lane, you guys. Should we knock? No, we shouldn't. Okay. We don't want to bother. A legend in his prime. And we may not go down there, but if you look down here, go get low. That is yet another. A lot of doors that could lead to any of, of a number of places. It's like it's like an Escher painting. Yeah. Anastasia. And I don't know what's going in there, but on some someday it'll be. John, do show. you know? 
I have no idea. They're they're closing soon. But and it, over it, here again, this has come from away. We have so we have time. Show. We have time to make more friends. We can make some friends and see more Hopefully, shows. If our show runs and runs, which we are hoping that it will, um, let's make some friends and make a pledge to uh, return to this on the blog, perhaps, and uh, find out where these doors lead. Okay. Thank you, Stark. Thank you, Duran. Hi. Hi and bye. Hello, Stark Sam. Hello, Gideon Glick. I have a question for you. What's your question? So you have done two Broadway plays and two Broadway musicals. Yes. What's the deal with doing a play versus doing a musical? Okay. The deal with, with a play versus a musical. The difference. Well, tell me what... If I put a gun to your head <laughs> right now, you have to pick one that you have to do for a year. Right now. What are you going to choose? Right now in right my life? Now. Right now? Of yeah. This play that I'm doing right now. Oh, wow. This play. Okay, is it because of the content of the play? I really just want to—I want to explore what you find more difficult. Well, that—that that is the reason is because of my own personal life stuff going on. Right. Because I have a small child, I have an infant, and I have like this works for my schedule. Okay. We can this can this we can weave this into the differences between plays and musicals, right? Yeah. When you're doing a musical, you have a uh, a lot more to think about and take care of vocally physically than you do in a play, generally speaking, right? Yeah, it's strenuous. So, for example, the threshold for which, at which I can, uh, health threshold at which I can perform this show mm -hmm. versus a musical is, uh, it's l lower. I think I, well, let me say this another way. If I'm at 65% health, I can still do this show. Right. I have done this show at 65%, everywhere from 65 up to 100. But... Because all I have to do is be able to get the words out and not, not be distractingly hoarse. Mm -hmm. But in a musical, it's like 82.5, 85%. Mm -hmm. If I can't sing it right, then I, I can't do it. There's no point. There's no point. It, it doesn't sound good enough. There, yeah. there's a, it has to be a certain way. Okay. So I find, personally, it's been a long time since I've done a musical, and I find there's a lot more freedom, personally, mm -hmm. doing a play in terms of where a scene can go, because I'm not tethered to, to rhythm, to sure. the rhythm of the song. Sure. Do you feel that way? I feel that way, yes. When it comes to the musical aspect of the musicals, you are kind of, the, the, the boundaries are slimmer. You, you have to work within what you've got, right. and you can't stray too far from it. You can still flex a little bit depending on the song. The scenes in the musical is where you can hopefully stretch and play, but that's all you have in a play is just the scenes. Is there a, um, okay, now you said you, you would choose this play, but now let's pretend this play's over. Mm -hmm. And someone's like, what's next? A musical. A musical, I, because you've just yeah. done a play? Yes. Got it. So you always want to kind of go back and forth. I feel, let me say this, I feel incredibly lucky to have been able to work in both categories. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you feel this way too. Because mm -hmm. there, um, uh, in, in our community, I think sometimes people are thought of as either musical theater actors or straight play actors. Mm -hmm. And to be able to have done a little of both mm -hmm. makes me feel very grateful because I know not everybody has that opportunity. Um, uh, I would, if if I had to choose, um, I would choose to do a musical next because because it would be different. And yeah. Because, and because there's there's something about, and this is speaking currently right now, it's really nice to be able to get up and express yourself in music, in song, and um, and to you know have every once in a while have an audience stop and just clap for the thing you just did. Right. That happens in this show. It too. does happen in this. Not show. for me. No. They just boo mostly for mostly for Latanya. Okay, it's evil. Um, <laughs> okay, what role? What um, musical role? You can't say hasn't been written yet. You have to pick one that has Jesus. been written that you would want to do. Um, you know what I thought was, this is just the first thing that pops into my mind, mm -hmm. but I really liked, um, I don't know if I want to say that. I don't know. I don't know if I should say that because there might be something better. The first thing that popped yeah, into my mind just go with was Catch instinct. Me If You Can, was Frank Abagnale and Catch Me If You Can. Okay. And then what about a play? Um, I would like to do another Shakespeare play. Okay. I would what like play? to do, oh gosh, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> this is going to be, uh, I would love to someday play Hamlet. Okay. I, that would be pretty cool. Okay. I don't think I'm ready for that yet, but I think I'll I would play, like to do that. I'll play Romeo. Because I think it's not what you would expect. Yeah. 
and I like that. That's or Edmund. I'd like to play Edmund. Edmund would be good too. Yes. I have an idea. Something that we can talk about that is a what that that's on on topic. Okay. The difference between plays and musicals in the uh, rehearsal process. Okay. Go so, for, for instance. When you're in a play, you show up on day one, you have the table read, and you have everything Everything that you need is right there on the pages in front of you. Mm -hmm. And you do table work for a few days, and you talk about the scenes, and you work through the scenes, and then eventually you get it up on its feet, and you just start, re re start rehearsing the show. But in a musical, it's different, because you show up, you might do a table read, and if you don't know the songs yet, then the musical director will plunk them out and sing them. Um, but after that first day or two of like meet and greet and, and, uh, and just talking through it, you, in my experience, you just go immediately to music. And the director's like, see you guys in a week. Yeah. And you sit down with the piano and the MD and you learn your parts. That's also like when you do a reading or a workshop yes. of a musical, most of the time it's not really about the work, it's about just learning the music. Yes. Which is a bummer. It is a bummer, but it's also, it, it's, 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 it forces you all to be in a room together doing one thing. You, you, you compartmentalize all the different things. Now, in a, in a reading, I agree, when you have limited time, it's never enough time. Yeah. And you have a 29-hour reading. There's never enough time to actually get it's it. It's just about learning music. It, it is. But in a full rehearsal process, I love it. I don't think there's any more that I love than just being in the rehearsal room and everybody sharing the space together, learning the music, learning the choreography, right. putting the scenes on their feet, it being all present for the same jokes and laughs and screw-ups and everything. Oh, the rehearsal process it's for anything is the best. Is the best. Yeah. I always... That, that's always my favorite part. Yeah. And I actually like previews as well. Me too. I like being, like, tethered to the theater. I mean, and then I get it, but then I get crazy, and I'm like, it has to end. But it's my favorite part. I'm the same way. I yeah. love previews because we're all together. Yeah. And I know that as soon as it ends, like I miss seeing you guys all the time because now that we are here, you know, Giddy and I both have our own individual dressing rooms, and they're on different floors. And I see you, and we pop in to say hi to each other. But it's nothing like previews. It's right. nothing like rehearsal where we're all together, like all this unit rehearsing together. Now we come to work, we do the show, we see each other on our tracks backstage, and we have a few moments to say hello to each other, and that's kind of it, going in and, and coming and going. Except when I interview you. Except, Now we yes, have time together. Here on Broadway.com. Thanks, Dark. You're welcome, buddy.